Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Lipschitz functions and their connections with uniform continuity. We say that F mapping E into R is a Lipschitz function if there is an M constant such that what? Such that f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to this constant m times x minus y for all x and y in E. Okay? Now we first claim that Lipschitz functions are all uniformly continuous. Proposition. If f is Lipschitz, then f is uniformly continuous. Okay. And so the proof is straightforward. The proof is just if we let epsilon be greater than zero, we can choose delta greater than zero, choose delta just to be epsilon over the Lipschitz constant. Then, if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to mx times y by the Lipschitz assumption. And then that's going to be less than m delta. But delta was epsilon over m, so this is just going to be epsilon. So that says that if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. And that proves that the function is uniformly continuous. But the converse is not true. So as a remark, remark, not every <clears throat> uniformly continuous function is Lipschitz. And here's a counterexample to that statement over here. What we can do is we can consider, so I claim, the claim is that the square root of x is uniformly continuous on the interval 0 to infinity. And the proof of that is as follows. So let's let epsilon be greater than 0 and choose delta to be epsilon squared. Then if we consider the square root of x minus the square root of y quantity squared, what can we get over here? What we'll get is we'll get that this is going to be equal to what? This is going to be square root of x minus square root of y. And then if I want to replace this, I can make this bigger over here by putting this, I can make this bigger by doing this, root x plus root y. Okay, that only makes it bigger by making the whole, since these are non-negative quantities, so I can make it bigger by doing that. And this by completing the square will be what? If I can combine these things over here and I'm going to have a what? I'll have a root x root x, gives me an x. I'll have a root y root y, that's going to be a minus y, and the cross terms are going to cancel. And I know that x minus y is less than delta, which was equal to epsilon squared. So by taking the square root of this inequality, what will we conclude? We'll conclude that root x minus root y is less than epsilon if x minus y is less than this delta. And that proves that the function root x is uniformly continuous. However, this is not a Lipschitz function. Well, how can we say it's not Lipschitz? Well, what we can say over here is this. If we had root x is not Lipschitz. <laughs> is not Lipschitz on the interval 0 to infinity. How can we see that? Well, if it were Lipschitz, I would have this inequality over here, less than or equal to m times x minus y, for all x and y in 0 infinity. Well, we can just choose y to be equal to 0, then that would say that root x, I don't need absolute value anymore, would just be less than or equal to m times x. But dividing by x since x is not equal, well, if x is 0, this is trivially true, right? But if x is not equal to 0, then I can, I can divide by this x, and what would I have over here? I'd have that 1 over the square root of x, would be less than or equal to m. But as x gets arbitrarily small, this gets arbitrarily large, so this is a contradiction. So the function root x is not Lipschitz 
on zero infinity, but it is what? But it is uniformly continuous. So Lipschitz is a smaller collection than the uniformly continuous collection. Thank you very much.